reasonable, realistic, rational, and risk averse, but not to the far extreme where it's making you fucking complacent and and half-assing and just playing this the safe route. These are all just fucking excuses to think small. These are all bullshit words that men throw around and phrase that men throw around when they just are fearing failure, fearing putting themselves out there, fear getting on the field, getting in the game, getting in the fucking arena and fearing just taking their shot at life of what they were called to do or meant to do that higher purpose, that higher calling. What's up, freaks? Welcome to another episode of the Steve Eckert Show podcast. Today, we are talking about potential and really wasted potential. But we're going to start off today with first a quote, then a statistic, and a story to kick things off. First, the quote is from Seneca. He said, it's not because things are difficult that we do not dare. It is because we do not dare that things are difficult. And think about that as we're going into this episode talking about potential and your la- or your wasted potential as a man. And here's the statistic. This is fucking nuts. Out of every 100 people, so 67% out of 100 people actually set goals for themselves. And then only 10 of those people actually make plans to reach the goals. And then only two of those 10 actually achieve the goals. So a maximum of 2% of people actually set goals, make plan for the goals, and then actually achieve their goals. Think of how crazy it is. Think of how much men are wasting their fucking potential in the world. And talk about wasted potential. Probably one of the biggest, the the most famous, greatest stories of wasted potential was Earl Manigault. They call him the goat. He was born in the, the 1940s and, and was uh, lived in Harlem, in Harlem, New York, playing basketball. And he was on the courts playing basketball. And, and the, the stories go that he would be just destroying everyone that came onto this court that even college top rated college players who went on to play in the NBA would play on this court that NBA players would play on this court and he would either hang in there and sometimes even just fucking dominate them. But here's what happened. He, it took a, a fateful turn when he started in high school, just started hanging out with the wrong crowd. As you, that's usually where it starts with the people you surround yourself with is what starts to wasting your potential and started getting into drugs and cutting class and all this other shit. And that's where it started. That's where he really started wasting his potential and then got kicked out of school and then got into drugs even more and did time for robbery and a couple of years, a, a couple of different times he went to jail, a couple of different times he went to prison for different drugs and whatever else. And eventually did start some programs once he got older, old life after his basketball career that never happened, did start trying to help out and, and start some youth programs. But he never played a single game in the NBA. He was, to be said, one of the greatest basketball players ever that never played professional basketball in the NBA. Never made a dime when, think about it, there's basketball players making tens of millions of dollars a year. This guy never made a single fucking dime playing basketball, all because of wasted potential. And, I'm, and I, I bring this story up because it just came up in our in a meeting I just had with the kids. We have a weekly meeting where it's just me and the two kids. They call it Professor Egghead. And we it's part of our homeschooling. And we were talking about potential and talking about both of the kids' potential. And I gave them this example. And then since then, I went and looked up some of the numbers and statistics and years. And and, and I forgot he even did time, time in jail and whatever else. But he eventually died of uh, heart problems that was said to be, and he even said he needed a heart tran- transplant and all the doctors are telling him that he's just was just weak, and he said it's all attributed to the drug use that he had. And talk about wasted potential. Never played a single game in, in the NBA, never made a freaking dime in the NBA, and he's considered one of the greatest basketball players ever. That, that other players' his styles, like the high-flying, energetic, athletic style that you see in players today or even from Michael Jordan and Dominique Wilkins back in the day, was all 
made off of this, off of Earl Manigault's kind of style. So what is potential? Let's go into the, the nerd it out, into the, the definition of potential. So potential is having or showing the capacity to become or develop into something in the future or some things ability to develop, achieve, or succeed. It also might, other, other words that are, are equivalent to potential can be likely or possible or probable or future. But here's the thing about potential. We did an episode just a couple weeks ago on legacy. And I give a very, and I got a lot of shit for it that people saying, well, that's not technically what legacy is. Like, whatever, shut the fuck up. Like, it's what legacy is. And it's just like potential. But it's technically... Uh, in the nerd textbook version is uh, in the future. It's the, the future uh, capabilities or potential, the, the possibilities and probabilities that, that you have is technically what potential is. But I just like legacy, to me, potential is right fucking now, like in the present. Like don't fucking wait. It doesn't have to be some fantasy world, futuristic, ideal that you just talk about like your just like your legacy your potential can be found out right now to, in this freaking moment and uh, Marcus really talks talks about it uh, uh, not wasting time not wasting potential not wasting your days not wasting your freaking energy he said at dawn when you have trouble getting out of bed tell yourself I have to go to work as a human being what would I have to complain of if I'm going to do what I was born for? The things I was brought into this world to do, or is that what I was created for? To huddle under the blankets and stay warm. Like, talk about a quote that just sums up wasting your fucking potential because maybe you don't know what you were meant to do or whatever else. And we'll get into that in a second. We actually have a full episode on your purpose. We have a full workshop on your purpose. But the point is, you need to stop fucking thinking small. Stop thinking safe and stop thinking comfortable and thinking of the easy way and being reasonable and realistic and rational. Think about those R's and risk averse, those four R's. Those all lead to complacency. Now, as a man, you should be the one that is to an extent reasonable, realistic, rational, and risk averse, but not to the far extreme where it's making you fucking complacent and and half-assing and just playing this the safe route, going the safe route. Because you know what these are all? All these words, these, and they sound like it's what a man should be. These are all just fucking excuses to think small. These are all bullshit words that men throw around and phrase that men throw around when they just are fearing failure, fearing putting themselves out there, fear getting on the field, getting in the game, getting in the fucking arena, and fearing just taking their shot at life of what they were called to do or meant to do, that higher purpose, that higher calling. It's fear of, of avoiding the challenges of thinking big because thinking big is going to create bigger, badder, harder challenges. So if I just say, well, you know what? I just want to be realistic. I just want to be reasonable. I just want to be rational. I don't want to take too many risks. Those are fucking excuses to think small. Excuses to not push the pace, to go and live on the freaking edge. It's time to be fucking bold and take risks as a man. And of course, you need to know what is your purpose, what is your higher calling, all that good stuff. We have different episodes on all that. But these are all just fucking excuses that men make because they know that it makes sense. And they'll say it to another man who also thinks he should be thinking rational. And I'm like, you know what? That makes sense. You should be rational. You shouldn't take risks. You know, you have responsibility. There's another fucking R word that we like to throw around that we use as excuses. Now, make no mistake, we definitely should be all those fucking things but under control, not use them as excuses and going so far on the end of the spectrum of reasonable and realistic and rational and responsibility and risk averse to where it's making you just a little bitch is what it comes down to. It, it turns you into a little bitch, a scared, weak, negative, little freaking bitch. Seneca said, begin at once to live and count each separate day as a separate life. That's not playing it small. That's not thinking reasonable and rational or overly reasonable and rational. I have to keep throwing it in there so I don't get the, the, the haters about, well, that's what a man should be. Of course, a man should be that stuff, but you get the point. But whatever you're doing, 
I guarantee you can either do more of it, you could do it better, or you could do it fucking harder, or have more focus or more discipline in what you're doing. I guarantee fucking to you as a man, whatever you're doing, you could do it better, more, and fucking harder. Because if we keep thinking we're going to be reasonable and rational, guess what? Perfectionism leads to procrastination. You wait for everything to be perfect. All your ducks in a row. I'm just waiting to get my ducks in a row. Or you're waiting for the perfect time to start your business or the perfect time to get married or to have kids or to move out of the state you're in. And, and, and you just bitch about it and complain about it all the freaking time, but you never do anything about it. Perfectionism leads to procrastination. You wait for the perfect time till the situation is perfect, till the circumstances are perfect, and it's never going to be fucking perfect. So that just gives you an excuse, again, to be rational, to play it safe, to think small. But you know what that means? You're staying average. You're staying mediocre. You're staying in fucking place. And uh, Seneca says, says, putting things off is the biggest waste of life. It snatches away each day as it comes, and it denies us the present by promising the future. The greatest obstacle to living is expectancy, which hangs upon tomorrow and loses today. Like, fuck, you're hanging on tomorrow because you're thinking about, oh, whatever's going to be perfect, and you lose today. You lose right now. The whole future lies in uncertainty, so live immediately. Like, you need to stop managing your life. There's a difference in in business. There's a difference between management and leading, and a huge difference. And yeah, both are needed, but you need to stop managing your life and start leading your life as a fucking man. You're a man. You're meant to be a leader, not just a manager or really not even hardly a manager at all. You need to start leading your life, start living your fucking life as a man because managing is kind of dealing with what the shit you already have, whatever is already there. You're just managing it and organizing it. Sure, you can maybe maximize it a little bit what's there. Managing is just dealing with what's already there, but leading is creating what could what else could be there. Leading is what could be next. What could be better? What could be different? What could be new? That's the way of leader is thinking. A purpose-driven man that's a leader is thinking of forward progress, of thinking of creating new paths and forging the fucking way. He's not afraid to dream and think big. He's not afraid to attack what other men or other managers see as unrealistic and unreasonable and risky and impossible. He's making that shit realistic. He's making it reasonable. He's making it rational. And he's making the impossible fucking possible. That's what a leader is doing. That's what leadership is doing. Another quote I like by Seneca, he says, you act like mortals in all that you fear, but act like immortals in all that you desire. Think about that. Let that one bitch slap you in the face. Like it's time is now, motherfucker. And sometimes being logical and reasonable and a realistic thinker is actually really being a small, scared, fucking negative thinker. Thinking big and bold It's not arrogant or cocky. Of course, if you're not too far on the other end of the spectrum, because we have the side of the spectrum where you're being overly reasonable, overly rational, just to make an excuse to not make big moves. But then the far other far end of that spectrum is just being a complete, arrogant, cocky dickhead. That's talking about that. We're talking about blending those two together. That's what confidence and, and courage is. The courage to think big, the courage to to make bold moves, the courage to take risks. That's confidence and courage right there. When you're able to do that, when everyone else around you is thinking it's unreasonable, it's irrational, it's not. You are born with this infinite fucking potential in you as a man. Like this is what you were created for as a man. You were created to create with limitless fucking possibilities as a man. That's why you were created. You have this higher calling, this purpose, these superpowers that we've talked about in previous episodes. And a lot of these episodes tie in and blend in together. So you should always be watching previous episodes. It helps set the table for each one. This is a continuous journey we're on. These are like every episode of the Steve Ecker show is like a building block towards self-mastery and meaning as a man. And let me tell you about it. You want men want safety and security. They can't take the risks. They can't Uh, make those bold moves because they want safety and security. You know what safety and security does? It leads to fucking complacency. And in the military, we say complacency kills. 
Sapient security leads you as a man to sacrificing your goals and your dreams and the lifestyle that you, you say you want. Safety and security sacrifices your fucking legacy, which means it sacrifices your future and it sacrifices right now and today because we already talked about your legacy and your potential is not only in the future. That's the easy way to say, oh, it's out in the future, so I don't have to do it right now. How about you nut up and say, all right, my legacy and my potential is fucking today right now. And you have to make those moves in order to go in, move in alignment with it, to move towards it, to move a step closer to it. Because listen, you're either playing to dominate and win or you're playing to freaking lose. There is no in between. You're playing to, playing to kill or be killed. Like that's all there is to it. And, and when it comes down to men's fear and thinking small and thinking big, most men have the same amount of fear and stress no matter what. If it's fear or stress about small, little, trivial, day-to-day, nonsensical bullshit or fear about and stress about bigger, positive risks or big, bold moves that they want to make and, and work towards to go towards their goals and dreams, to risks that they want to take to create a massive impact. It's the same amount of fucking stress. It's the same amount of fear and stress, the same type of fear and stress in small things and in big things. So... Why not? If you're going to fucking, if you're going to experience fear and stress and struggle and anxiety anyway, you're just going to feel that as a man to the same fucking extent for the most part, make it fucking worth it. Like go big, go for the big one, be fucking bold. Like this is what your purpose is as a man to be that one that steps up into that role. Like this is kind of what, what we did when we moved here to California. I was thinking, all right, I'm running a business have employees, There's you have stresses about whatever, about running a business and about finding clients and whatever else. I might as well do it. And I, and I was already working from home. I said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to have this same level of stress. I might as well do it in a different environment. If I could be outside in the sun and the palm trees, like I have an outdoor office right outside my office here, sitting by the pool. And I sit there and do my meditation and my journaling, looking over the, the yard and the pool and the dogs running around in, in our property with the sun all year round except for those days of rip off and the clouds show up. Nobody showed me that shit in the fucking brochure. My cameraman hates that saying, but he's giving me a dirty look. But that's what, it's going to suck anyway, basically. It's going to be hard anyway. You might as well be hard in, a, in an environment, in a situation, doing bigger and cooler and bolder shit because you're going to feel the same anxiety and stress. I would feel the same anxiety and stress sitting in gloomy and gloom New York with the gray clouds and the dead trees half the year. I'm going to feel the same anxiety and stress. Might as well make it fucking worth it. And then I was doing in-home training. When I was doing in-home training, I first started my, my own business was doing in-home training and said, you know what? This is stress to find clients, to do whatever. I might as well have the same this type of stress in an actual location. So we took the big, bold move and put a shitload of money into opening a physical location in, in New York. And then, all right, now it's, it's going to be the same stress to do everything by myself or to hire a team and, run, and, and have a team so I could grow and scale the business. It's going to be the same level of fear and anxiety and stress and pressure and struggle and hardship. So I'm going to might as well make it fucking worth it on bigger and bolder big moves instead of little baby boy fucking moves. Little safe, secure, scared bitch ass moves. Cameraman likes that. He's giving me a thumbs up. He likes it. He likes the sound of it. And then even closing the gym to start all these coaching business and these live events that we do out here in California, all these big group men's personal development events and father and son, the Squire program, the one-on-one coaching I do with OTD, the Freak Father Alliance, which is the men's mentorship group coaching program, the Infinite Freak Fitness Formula. It's the last workout program you ever need, the most amazing online fitness training program you could possibly ever be a part of. It took bold moves to say, I'm going to close up a gym a physical location that I've been running for over a decade to go do this online stuff. But those were bigger and bolder moves. The new, the next, because listen, every move that you make is just a stepping stone to the, to the bold move. It's just a stepping stone to the next big thing, the NBT, the next big thing. And that thing you're doing that you now became the norm at one point was a bold move and now it became the normal. And now it's just a stepping stone to the next bold move, the next big thing. And at the same time, so in order to make that happen, in order to make it a stepping stone, you need to start having appreciation and gratitude and start maximizing what the fuck you have right now instead of worrying about what you don't have. Because then you're never going to have what you don't have. And you're always going to be stuck with only what you do have. 
Wrap your fucking head around that. So start maximizing what you do have and turn it into where you can maximize it and weaponize it to turn it into the stepping stone to the next big thing by making that next bold move. You only are living when you are fucking maximizing your potential as a man. You are not living as a man until you are maximizing your potential and your purpose and your power and your passion. But it all starts with your potential and not, and not out your potential. That's only when you're living and you fulfill your purpose as a man is when you, you, you are according to that potential and that passion and that power. Anything short of that is just a wasted fucking life as a man. And it's an unproductive and a, a dead life. You're just waiting to fucking die when you are not wasting your potential. You are not living up to your potential, that purpose, that higher freaking calling. So stop acting like your fucking best days are behind you. Bajor's Cooling has in his gym across massive letters across the entire length of the wall it says never peak. The best is yet to come. And I, I love that saying. So stop acting like your best days are behind you. No matter what your fucking age is, you're always are going to should be planning to get even fucking better. Like you're just getting started, motherfucker. That's why you need to think about it. Another quote. I don't remember who this one was. He said, let us prepare our minds as if we've come to the very end of life. Let us postpone nothing. Let us balance life's books each day. Like it's a like it's Allen's sheet. The one who puts the finishing touches on their life each day is never short on time. Actually, it was Seneca who said that. And then how long are you going to wait before you demand the very best of yourself? Let that fucking sink in. How the fuck long are you going to wait before you demand the best of yourself? You have more fucking potential than you think, and you're wasting it bullshitting and half-assing through life. But you'll never know what your fucking full potential is unless you keep pushing and pressuring yourself and challenging yourself and pushing beyond those self-imposed, self-limiting beliefs you put in yourself, that, that safe and secure and reasonable and rational and realistic bullshit caps that you put on yourself that you use as excuses. I'm not saying be reckless and careless. That is not what we're saying. Or fucking lazy. This isn't a, this is an excuse to, to be any of those things. But if you're careless and lazy now and keep putting things off and always pushing it back to tomorrow and procrastinating because you're waiting for perfection, you're going to make no fucking progress in life. And you're going to die with regret. You're going to die average and fucking ordinary, unfulfilled. You're going to die as a, a, a mediocre man. So I want to kind of wrap things up with, with some queer. Like, where do you need to be more bold in life? Like, where the fuck are you holding back as a man? And what the fuck are you letting stop you? And why? And you pause this if you need to. You could actually write this out. You should be journaling this out. Like, where do you need to be more bold in life? Where are you holding back? What the fuck are you letting stop you? And why are you letting that happen? And then what situations in life are you the most confident and bold already? So you can build on that. And then what situations do you hold yourself back more than you should be? Where you should be bolder and take more risks. Then how can you demonstrate that boldness right the fuck now to, to realize your potential today, this fucking moment. Don't think potential. Oh, I have potential for this, so I'm going to be great when this happens. Fuck that. How can you demonstrate your potential with confidence and fucking boldness today, right now, in this fucking moment, in a way that moves you closer towards mastery as a man and closer towards your goals and your dreams and your ultimate freak freedom lifestyle that you're after? How can you step up today in other areas that have been holding you back. Like, what the fuck are you waiting for? Stop holding back. Use your strengths. Develop your weaknesses. Weaponize your confidence and your fucking boldness. Keep that word in mind, weaponizing it. Stop waiting to catch a fucking break or an opportunity to come knocking on the door. Go out and break shit, build shit, create shit. Make shit happen, motherfucker. Stop freaking waiting. There's a time to be patient and there's a time to attack. Today, this moment, this fucking minute, as a man, it's time to motherfucking attack. Because men, we have work to do, so let's get to fucking work. And this is exactly the kind of things that we build and work on together in the Freak Father Alliance, which is where I help entrepreneurs, fathers, and men to develop a no-excuses mindset so they could build more muscle, make more money, have more meaning, so they can attack this mission in life to create their ideal lifestyle with time freedom for their families. That's 
living up to your full potential. If you want to start living to your full potential, send me a message. I'll tell you all about the Freak Follower Alliance. I will get you up and running. Let's make it happen. Step the fuck up. Be bold. Stop being reasonable and rational and realistic and risk averse. Make a bold move today. Take a big risk today. Start today. Answer those questions I just asked you. Write them down. Put in the comments down below. I want to hear about your answers to those questions and send me a message about the Freak Follower Alliance if you want to take things to the next level where where we can work together with a group of like-minded men on a daily basis. And in case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses. Find me.